Our today's topic is fossils in time and space and in which we will be discussing about paleobiogeography. The paleobiogeography is composed of three words. Paleo means ancient, bio means life and geography means geo from the earth, graphy means to measure. That means we are studying the ancient biogeography. In the paleogeography, we study that we have all the living organisms that are living in a defined geographic range. Every organism is living in its habitat and that habitat is, form, uh, is present in a particular geographic area. The ranges may be large or small and controlled by a variety of factors including climate and latitude. An organism which is found in a desert will not be found in a rainforest and other way around. Why? Because they are containing the different climate and may have the different latitude. Climate is the year-round patterns of the weather, while latitude is that how that particular area is far from the, uh, uh, far from the center of the earth. The early biologist, just, uh, just like Charles Darwin, who uh, visited the Galapagos Islands, and Alfred Russel Wallace, who uh, studied the areas of East Indies, they recognized the reality of biogeographic provinces. That means there were some areas of the earth which were having a particular, their own life. For example, the kangaroos, we have discussed this example before. They are present only in Australia and the marsupial mammals, if you study the pouched mammals, they are present only in a particular area which is called Australia. They are not present in any other uh, biological, biogeographic provinces. So same is the case for every other organism, right? So the uh, organisms of different areas will have their different properties different morphologies in today's life. Now, if we study this in ancient life, right, so that would be paleogeography, paleobiogeography. So, there was a scientist named as Philip Skeletor and Alfred Russell Wallace in the mid-1800s. They divided the earth in six main bi biogeographic provinces. The named as Neoctic, Paleoctic, Neotropical, Ethiopian, Oriental, and Australasian. And here you can see the picture. The Neoctic is present in the North America. Neotropic is in the South America. Afrotropic is Africa and parts of the Middle East. The Paleotropic is composed of the North America, Europe, and Asia. Indo-Malaya is composed of the India and the Highland, Cambodia, and other regions, and Oceania regions. Australasia is composed of the parts of the Asia as well as the Australia. So all of these areas contain their own biogeography. It contains the living organism that they have their own characteristics. So early biogeographic, such as the German scientist Alfred Wagner suggested that continents move across the uh, surface on a liquid core, suggesting that continents could in, uh, in fact drift. So he gave the idea of continental drift. That means continents, the earth is a globe and inside there is magma. The mag On the surface of the magma, the continents are drifting uh, with very, very minute speed. But in the geological time, that is very high speed. And they can ultimately at some point in time can collide with each other. Where they collide, they form the mountains, and where they fall apart, there comes the ocean. So he gave the idea of continental drift, and with the help of this idea, we can say that there were some areas which were part of other continents, now a part of uh, some other continent. So there are some uh, computerized paleographic systems on the basis of which we can understand the plate movement 
and we have the paleo map project that how the life or the earth itself was in the previous eras so uh, the we can take the earth not only into the past we can see that how the earth was in the past but also we can see that how the earth will look like in future so the uh, when this happens then uh, when the organisms are uh, when the earth is uh, uh, divided into continents due to the tectonic movements there are some barriers formed or there are some uh, movement of the organism is restricted so barriers of various types have partitioned the biogeographic provinces throughout the time for example the organism living on the north america could not go to the south america or other way around but at some point they could so we will be discussing that later so work of gellard symptom he gave the idea that how organisms move through the barriers there are some corridors which are open all the time there are filters which allow restricted access and then there are the sweep stake routes which are opened only occasionally so the during the, uh, what are the barriers the in the continental settings if you, we are living in the terrestrial environment there are mountain ranges inland seas or even rainforest which can hinder the movement of the organisms and in the marine fauna there are wide expanses of deep ocean just like mariana trench the organism cannot move from one place to another place in that and swift ocean currents or land so there is an example of isthmus of panama the north america is attached with the south america with the very narrow strip of the terrestrial uh, environment and that is a uh, that may be a barrier for the organism which are living in the atlantic ocean and the pacific ocean because that narrow strip of land is not only providing a corridor for the north american and south american organisms the terrestrial organism but also separating the two oceanic uh, eco ecologies so the emergence of the isthmus of panama uh, 3 million years ago connected the north and south america and separated the atlantic and pacific ocean and here you can see the isthmus of panama this is the piece of land which has connected the both continents but at the same times it has separated the two oceans and which has resulted into the different diversification in the oceans while exchange of organism between the two continents that is called great american biological interchange of organism gabi g a b i and you can we will be discussing that in the biogeography in the next part of this course